what I what what public opinion polls tend to show is that most the overwhelming majority of Russians believe the United States to be the most threatening country to their lives. In other words, they believe that if the United States could, it would wipe them out. And that if the United States people say, you know, uh, the American president, that we would like to see a strong, democratic Russia. Nah, that's not true. They don't want to see a strong Russia. They want to see a weak Russia. In fact, they'd like Russia to fall apart like the Soviet Union did. That's what they really want. They want to take over our wealth, our natural resources, our oil and our gas and our metal. That's what they want. Because the um, leadership to Putin does not believe that you can trust the United States. Um, he said this. He said, you cannot trust them. They're just figuring out a way to, is, you know, excuse me, to screw you. That's what they're doing. And he said, look at Ukraine. There was a deal made on the 22nd of February, 2014. They signed the guarantee. And then what did they do? They backed off and they let the revolution happen and they all went that way. And that I'd been promised that this was the way it would happen gradually, that there would be normal elections. And so he said, how can you trust them? Lethal weapons are given by the United States to Ukraine. Then they will be used in the Southeast. And then the Russians will step in. 100%. They will not allow it. But should Russia attack militarily, the Ukraine's over in two days. There's just no comparison. What happens? Does the West retaliate? It's nobody, is anyone going to go to war over Ukraine? I mean... This is, look, Putin is a guy who understands force. And although, I, you know, I and the, and the team at the Institute for the Study of War have written for years about how clever he's been with information operations and hybrid war and lots of other things, at the end of the day, Putin understands force. And if you take force off the table and you tell him that he's not going to have to worry about a forcible response, that shapes his calculation in a certain direction. If you put force on the table and tell him that maybe he does have to worry about mixing it up with the American military or NATO, then that would have changed his calculation in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And I think I will say that it was, in my view, unfortunate that President Biden said and kept repeating that we would not fight in Ukraine, because I think that leaving ambiguity in Putin's mind on that question would have been a good idea. But should Russia attack militarily. What happens? Does the West retaliate? It's nobody, is anyone going to go to war over Ukraine? I mean... Because I think that leaving ambiguity in Putin's mind on that question would have been a good idea. The new world order, if you will, that, that, that was established when the Soviet Union disappeared, as seen by the United States, is a world order where there's one superpower. The Russian view, as expressed by Putin, is that there is no more, there is no such thing as a superpower. The world cannot be a unipolar thing. It has to be multipolar. There are interests, everyone has their interests. And we will not accept this. So that's where the real clash is. The Ukraine is about that. And then the, the virtual unanimity of the General Assembly um, you know, on that resolution is a devastating blow to Putin's, you know, narratives over many years that he believes in collective or in, 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 um, in multipolarity, that he believes in the UN, that the UN should be the, you know, the, the arbiter of all of these things. He's thrown that back at the US uh, for decades and to be repudiated by the UN as thoroughly as he just was 
is a devastating blow for him informationally. And that's, I've been very gratified by it. I mean, when you see the Russians lose a vote in the UN General Assembly by 141 to 5, I mean, <laughs> mm. uh, Putin, that is, a, that is an astonishing failure of Russian messaging, information operations, and public diplomacy when, listen, the only former Soviet state that voted against that resolution was Belarus, which has 30,000 Russian troops in it. Gradually in this country, you know, this is a, a nation that considers itself to be a great nation. Mm -hmm. It has that, call it a complex, call it whatever you want, but it's there. Uh, and the feeling that, that we're being treated like, like we're nobody, gradually has built up anti-Americanism, and finally along comes Putin, who after, he got in in the year 2000, as you know, but in 2007, at a meeting of the, I think, G20 in Munich, he made this famous speech in which he told the West, you cannot treat us this way, we refuse, you have to take into consideration our interests. We have geopolitical interests, just as you do, and we will not stand for this kind of treatment. And he's tremendously popular here because he's seen as the man who brought Russia back, who stood up to the West, and in particular to the United States, and said, we will not allow this. We have our interests. And that's what Ukraine is really about. But it's about who's boss? Who's boss? You know, even even the Kazakhs, even the Armenians didn't vote um, against that resolution. They abstained. That that's that's a sort of a repudiation of a sort when even within the within the Russia dominated world. I've been very gratified by it. I mean, when you see the Russians lose a vote in the UN General Assembly by 141 to five, I mean, <laughs> mm. Uh, Putin, that is, a, that is an astonishing failure of Russian messaging, information operations, and public diplomacy.